In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Microsoft Excel to create a graph a scatter plot using data from our cooling curve. And I'm using Microsoft Excel 2007 for this video, but the basic ideas should be the same for later versions as well. Um, I've opened up Excel and I've already entered data into a spreadsheet here, Sheet 1. If you look at the bottom of the page on the left, Sheet 1. Um, in, notice the spreadsheet is divided into columns, A, B, C, D, etc., and rows, or 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So in cell A1, which is column A and row 1, I've entered the, the title time, and it says minutes, but I'm going to change that to seconds here. And the times will go from 0 and then to 30 seconds and then to 90 seconds, sorry, to 60 seconds. We're going up by 30 second intervals. I could just type in all of those, or now that I've typed in two or three of the uh, numbers in that pattern, I can highlight the two or three numbers, click on the little black square you see at the bottom of those numbers, and drag that down. And what will happen is, because I highlighted at least two numbers in the pattern, uh, Microsoft recognizes the pattern and Excel will fill down when you, when you drag that down like that. So one more time, if you highlight only one cell and use that same little black square, click and drag it down, it'll just copy the contents of that one cell. And so be careful you don't do that. You want to highlight both the 0 and the 30, then click on that little black square in the bottom right hand corner of the numbers and drag that down while still holding your mouse button and that'll fill in the numbers down to in my case 600 seconds now your data may or may not have uh, that same number of uh, time intervals you might have fewer data or you might have more data that's okay i've chosen in column b to put my temperatures for naphthalene and in column C to put my temperatures for water. And you'll notice that I've got nice little titles there. Temp degrees Celsius water for column C. Temp degrees Celsius naphthalene for column B. And the degree symbol, if you want to be adventurous and you've got a keyboard in front of you with a number pad on the right hand side, you can press the Alt button on your keyboard, which is right beside the space bar. Press and hold the Alt button, and while holding it, type 248 on the keypad to the right and let go of the Alt button, and you should see a degree symbol. If you can't get that, then just use a capital C for Celsius. That'll be fine. Enter your temperatures, and there's no fast way to do that. You just have to copy them from your data booklet. Now we have a data table set up with uh, all of our times, temperatures in it, and we're ready to make our scatter plot. I'm going to click on cell A1 and then highlight all of the cells with the numbers and titles in it. So I've got all of my titles highlighted as well as the numbers below, the times and temperatures. At the top of the screen here you see different uh, tabs. One of the tabs says insert, so let's go there, and charts. In fact, we want to insert a scatter plot. Okay? We don't want to use a line graph, so be sure you choose the right type of graph. We're using a scatter plot. Click on that button, and the first two types are the types we, you know, I would accept for this graph, um, either just plotting points or points with a line through it. And that's what I'm going to use, points with a smooth line through it. So I'm going to choose this option here. Excel recognizes the data that I just had and creates a scatter plot for me, but put it right here in the middle of the page, and I don't like that. What I'd like to see is a, is a big graph. Now at the top of the screen on the right, you see the option to move the chart. Okay, I could click on that option, and I will in a minute. If you click somewhere outside the graph first, you'll notice now that that button's gone. In fact, at the top of the screen, it no longer gives us the same options. So click once on the graph, and now you'll notice at the top of the screen it says Chart Tools. And if you go to the Design Tools, on the right we can now move the location of the chart. We can click on that, and right now it's an object in Sheet 1. If I change it to the New Sheet option, and then say OK, 
now it's a sheet on its own. There's a whole graph. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's sheet one. I can click on that, and there's my original data. And I can go and change that if I want. Or if I click on chart one, there's the graph that we just made. Now the graph is OK, but there's several problems with it. There's no title. The axes are not labeled. And one really annoying thing is this whole space right here that's not being used. It's just a big blank space. So let's go in and clean this up and make it look more attractive. If you put your mouse over the right, sorry, over the left hand scale, the vertical axis, put it over until you see the phrase vertical value axis. If you put it over a number, it'll say that. If you put it too far to the right, it might say plot area. If you put it too far to the left, it might say chart area. If you put it right over a grid line, it'll say vertical grid line. What you want is to say vertical axis. When you see that, right click with your mouse and then format the axis. Our data, at least the data in my data table, um, the highest temperature was uh, less than 90 and my lowest temperature was above 60. So what I'm going to do is change the minimum and the maximum value from the automatic values that are selected for 0 to 100 and I'm going to change that to a minimum value of 60 just because all of my temperatures were above 60 and a maximum value of 90 because all of my values were below 90. When you're choosing minimum and maximum values, choose nice numbers. Don't choose something like 63 or 91. Um, you might even argue that 90 is not the best choice. And maybe 60 to 100 is a good choice. But if you look right here, 60 to 100 is, is there right now. If I click on the um, next option for major unit, it'll apply the 60 to 90. And now my graph fills up more of the grid. And I, and I just like that a little bit better. Notice that on the y-axis now, the numbers go 60, 70, 80, 90. Um, that's because the major unit is set to 10. If I change the major unit to 5, okay, and press Enter, then now it goes 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. I'm going to go back, vertical axis, and format the axis. If I do my minor unit, also fixed, I can say one degree. I like that better than two degrees. Okay. Major tip tick mark right now down below is outside the axis, which is fine. If you look at the axis beside each of these numbers, there's a little tiny tick coming outside the axis. The minor tick marks are not showing up at all. In fact, it says none. If I change that to outside, just like the major tick marks, now close this. You'll notice now on the y-axis, there's all these little tick marks, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, which makes it easier to read. Let's do the same thing to the x-axis. Put your mouse over one of the numbers there until it says horizontal axis. Right-click and format the axis. And our minimum value is, is um, let's see, it says minimum value fixed at 60. I'm still on the y-axis values, actually. Got to go back to my horizontal axis. There we are. Right-click and format that. There we are. The minimum value is set to 0. The maximum set to 700. Um, the 0 is fine, but my maximum value for me in my data was only 600. So I'm going to change that from 7 to 600. The major unit, let's see, I measured every 30 seconds. I suppose I could make the major units 30 seconds, but maybe what I'll do is make it 60 seconds. Okay, so now there'll be a number 0, 60, 120, etc. And my minor unit, I'll make that 30 seconds. So now there'll be numbers 0, 60, 120, 180, and there'll be tick marks in between those numbers which represent 30 second intervals. I'll make sure my minor tick mark is set to be outside as well. And now I can say close this and looking at the x-axis 0, 60, 120, 180, etc. going up by 60 seconds. And there's one tick mark in between to represent the 30 second intervals in between. So that looks pretty attractive. If I click once on the legend, 
and then right click on the legend I can format it. I like to put it at the bottom of the graph rather than on the side so that it takes up less space. My graph will take up more space. Okay, so change the location to the bottom and say OK. That's looking pretty good. So now the graph is looking good. We, maybe we can put some grid lines. We can make this look like a piece of graph paper. If I put my mouse over on the side there and um, right click, I want to format, whoops, put back over the vertical axis and right click. Notice we can add minor grid lines. If I do that, every second interval that we had there, every degree rather, now has a line. If I go to the x-axis and do the same thing, put my mouse over the horizontal axis and right click, we could add major grid lines because there are none right now. That looks pretty good. And I might even leave this as it is. If you want to also add the minor grid lines in the same way, that would be fine as well. Okay, now that's looking like a piece of graph paper. This looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's put in the titles of our graph. Notice, if, again, if I click somewhere outside the graph, then at the top of the screen I've lost a lot of the options to, to uh, adjust the graph. So click on the graph somewhere. At the top you now see Chart Tools. Let's go to the Layout options for the Chart Tools. And notice we have options here to put in a title for the chart and axis titles. Let's do that. Chart Title. I'm going to choose the center overlay. You could also choose above the chart if you want. So center overlay. And now I'll double click inside that title and I'll change this to something like this. Cooling curve for naphthalene and water. Okay, that looks pretty good. One little point about it is that because of the grid lines I've added, it's kind of hard to read a little bit that title. If I right-click and format the title, I can change the fill to a solid fill, and I can make the color white. And notice what this will do. Okay, so close. Now the title has a white background, making it easier to read those, those words. If I click on it, I can also go to the Home menu, and I can make the title a little bit bigger. I can also click somewhere on the title, drag it around and move it to where I'd like it to be. So I can play around with that. If I go to the back, click on the chart, go back see chart tools at the top, go back to your layout, and now this time let's go to axis titles, the horizontal axis below the axis, and again double click inside the box where it says axis title, and now I can say that hey this is time, and in seconds, be sure you include units. And one more axis title at the top. Let's go to vertical. And I like the rotated option for the vertical axis title. So click rotated title. And now double click inside there. Get rid of the book there. And this was temperature bracket alt 248. Gives me a degree symbol, capital C for Celsius. Okay? That looks pretty good. Now, this would be a perfect graph. Okay? It's got all the titles, it's got nice axes, uh, there's grid lines, there's no big blank spaces on it, there's a legend because there's two curves on it. This looks really attractive. Um, I could clean it up to slightly, maybe take the title of the axis and make that slightly bigger because it's a title of an axis, it should be easier to, to read. Same thing for the time. I'll make it the same size as the temperature. Okay, now that's looking very nice. Okay, one little thing I might do: click back on there, go up to Chart Tools, back to the Layout option. I can put a text box in here, and watch what I can do here. I click text box and go over to the plateau for the chemical for the naphthalene in this case, and I can click there and I can put in here something like this. This is the freezing point. That's where the plateau is. Freezing point equals, and if I look at my y-axis, that freezing point appears to be at about 78, and then again the alt 248 gives me a degree symbol Celsius. So there's a, a um, label for my graph that tells me what the freezing point was. I can go in there and I can make that bold if I want. 
and I can make it slightly bigger, easier to read. That's really what this graph is all about, isn't it? To show me what the freezing point of the naphthalene was. And I'll put the label right beside the plateau to remind me where I found that. Okay? There we go. This is now ready to use. If I go to Microsoft Word, I'm going to open up Word. This is where I'm making my lab report. Okay? Suppose you've already got your title page made, you've already got your abstract in there. You'd now like to put the data tables. Well, why do tables twice? If I go back to Excel, go down here to Sheet 1, I can highlight right here all of the data and the, the, the labels at the top, right click and copy, go back to Word, and where I'd like to put the data table, right click and paste. And that should copy the numbers into the into Word. I can uh, go in here and above the table. Let's see here, I'll just click on there and move the whole thing down slightly. I can put in a, a, a title for the table. This is data, time, and temperatures for cooling naphthalene and water. Some descriptive title like that, which is nice. And there I go. Now if your table has lots of numbers, you don't want it to spill over onto the next page. So um, either highlight everything in the table and then using your option you can decrease the font size slightly to make it uh, perhaps fit on one page. Or um, if it's lower down on the page and therefore spilling over onto another page, just uh, Let's just move the whole table until it's at the top of the page, and that, that might help as well. All right, I'm going to go down below the data table. Whoops, undo that. I'm going to go down here below the data table, and I want to, um, uh, where am I? I want to put my um, graph. So I'm going to go down below the data table to the next page. Here we are. And I'm going to go back to Excel. I go down to the bottom of the page where it says Chart. Click on that. Here's my graph. And I'll click somewhere inside the graph. That highlights everything. Now I'll right click and I'm going to copy the graph. Go back to Word. And I'm going to right click and paste and that should copy the graph into there. Now notice, because it's not exactly the same size, um, some of the stuff now looks a little uh, uh, screwed up. So I'm going to go to the title, and I can highlight everything in the title, okay, and make it slightly smaller this time. Make it fit a bit nicer. There we go. My text box got squeezed, so I'll just move it over. And now that's looking pretty nice. That's a that's a pretty nice graph inside my Word document with my data table. Um, I can now finish off my lab report. Okay, So if you could, at this point, play with Microsoft Excel, make your graph, make your scatter plot, format it to look nice, and see if you can copy and paste both the data table and the graph into a Word document. Okay, Don't uh, make your lab report yet because we'll talk a little bit more about that on Monday. All right, hope that helps. Good luck with your...